things I saw in terms of use cases is somebody used the chat GPT to describe rooms, then they took the descriptions of those rooms, and then they put them into like Dolly or stable diffusion, one of those, and it created the visual. I'm curious if you think, you know, the self driving APIs, uh, and machine learning that's going on, then you got images, then you got chat, maybe you have proteins going on with the alpha fold stuff. When these things start talking to each other, is that going to be the emergent behavior that we see of general AI? And that's how we'll interpret it in our world is these 100 different vertical AIs uh, hitting some level of reasonableness to Chamath's point on data sets. And then all of a sudden, the self driving AI is talking to the one that's looking at cancer and tumor diagnosis and the chat and the image ones, and maybe stable diffusion, the protein AI, and the one that's looking at cancer cells start talking to each other. Yeah, I'm not sure that's as likely as the there's a lot of solutions that will emerge within verticals. And I think you can distinguish them. So I kind of gave this example a few months ago. If you remember Kai's power tools was a plugin for Adobe Photoshop yes. it came out in yeah. 1993, I believe, of course, and Kai's power tools completely transformed the potential of Adobe Photoshop, because Photoshop had all the basic brushing and editing capabilities within it. Kai's power tools was statistical models that basically took the matrix of the pixels and, you know, created some evolution of them into some visual output like a blur. And so you could blur motion blur something and you could change the parameters. And now your photo looked like it was going through a motion blur. Ultimately, Photoshop bought and implemented those tools. But those were similar. They were statistical models that made some representation of the input, which was the image, and then created an output, which was an adjusted image. I would argue that that is very similar, although the models behind it are very different uh, in terms of the contextual application um, of statistical models in software. And you could see stuff like, for example, a chatbot that replaces, help me figure out whether my credit card charges are correct or not, instead of having a customer service agent, an offshore customer service agent helping you resolve that, or help me return my item. Um, or there are very specific kind of verticalized applications that can plug in that ultimately replace what was manual and human driven before, because humans used to manually make the motion blur in Photoshop, and then it was automated with these software packages. And I think you can kind of think about it in that same way that these, these are known knowns, they don't require necessarily a human physical labor or some, you know, human responsiveness that if 95% of the work can be handled, it will get handled by some verticalized solution. So I think the physical labor versus the non physical labor is one way to think about the distinction, meaning is there some change in the physical world? Driving is absolutely a change in the physical world, you have to move physically through space. So that one is a very distinct class, all the stuff that's like communication, imagery, static imagery, audio, and then visual video, there's some stacking that happens there. And some of those will be kind of siloed and then some of them will merge and you'll have these kind of unique kind of combo models. And so look, as they start to work together, I think we'll see them, you know, completely rewrite some of these verticals, like movie production or music production, right, or advertising, or we're seeing it now with, with video and, and creative arts, uh, with, um, you know, some of the, the, the visual stuff on OpenAI. And to be so, honest, a lot of journalism, a lot of creative arts have become the wisdom of the crowds over the last two decades, where, you know, artists were looking at the collective works of the internet, interpreting it, and then coming up with content, which is kind of what these AIs are doing. Uh, and then who legally owns the collective content is, is going to be a big question. Chamath, you talked about data sets, yep. and Microsoft is being sued right now, and GitHub because they uh, used open source to create tools in AI to help augment programmers like while they're programming and writing code it gives them suggestions and now the open source community is suing them for using their data set so wh what do you think about the legality of data sets chamath and, and should they get some kind of protection if you make a gpt3 based on quora or based on wikipedia should you have to get approval to use that data what i think wikipedia it's the exact Commons. opposite yeah it's it's the exact opposite they say that this is actually your work um, and I think that that's the right legal framework. But the, the answer to your other question is, this is why I think the hunt for proprietary data actually becomes the hunt that matters. 
all of this other stuff, I think, is a lot less important because I think you have to assume that all of these models will eventually just get commoditized. So there'll be there'll be a you know like you see like Jasper AI and you see a bunch of these generative AI companies. It's really interesting, but the problem is when you sit it on top of the same substrate, you'll have a convergence, right? Everybody's chat model will eventually look and sound and feel like the same thing unless you're giving it a few special ingredients that other people are not. And so it's the hunt for those ingredients that will make this next generation of of models really valuable. So to give it but an example, you would have Wikipedia, which is Creative Commons, anybody can use, but Quora as a data set, not everybody can use, that's owned by a company. Well, so, so Quora would a, have an advantage. An, take an extreme example. If Quora didn't allow themselves to be crawled. Right. Okay. Which they um, don't, yeah. And, but then, the, and then they developed their own language model, which used the best of the internet. So call it, you know, GPT and Quora. Mm. Maybe they are slightly better in certain domains than others. The, right. the the other extreme example is the one that I used in healthcare, which is, you know, if you have access to patient data that you will not license to anybody else, you know, it stands to reason that that model actually then has much better chances of. Uh, highly effective clinical outcomes versus any other model. Apple Watch comes to mind, right? Apple has all that watch data. If they could pair that with Epic's it's another you know, very data good set, example. That's another you know, like, good example. what could they do together? So this is going to be like this is the the new oil is going to be and, data. And by the way, like to 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 talk about Apple for a second, the smart thing is they've gotten so methodically. They've never touted the AI. You know, mm. they introduce one or two distinguishing features every year, right? Mm. So like the 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 ECG, which was introduced many, many years ago, is has only gotten slightly more usable like five or six years later. But in the meantime, there's, you know, tens of millions of watches collecting this kind of data. So to your point, it's it's using these devices as Trojan horses to collect training data. That is the oil. Uber and Tesla have all this data of the data being collected by, you know, the well, hold on. Uh, so phones the, the, or the cameras in the cars. The, the other difference, though, is that you have to be in a realm where you don't need regulators to go the last mile. So the problem with ADAS, I think, or level five autonomy is that eventually you get to a point where even if the model becomes, quote unquote, perfect, you still need regulatory approval. And what I'm saying is I think you have to focus on areas of the economy that are not subject to that or where the regulatory pathway is already defined. So for example, if you use a healthcare example, let's say that you had the largest corpus of breast cancer image data and you could actually build an AI that was a much better classifier for tumors versus other things, the FDA actually has a pathway to get that approved very quickly. The problem with you know level five autonomy is that there is no clear pathway. It's not, again, we go back to almost a, a crypto example. We don't really know who will govern that decision and we don't know how that will be governed. So. I think the the thing that investors have to do and entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs have to pick their end market very carefully and investors have to realize that this dynamic exists as well. If you're going to do this right and make Imagine money. Imagine the Robinhood trading, uh, you know, uh, trader data set, watching people sell in shares and then predicting markets with it, with AI. I mean, it could be crazy. Well, you have that or payment for order flow that's used by Citadel and the other big- But not um, AI, right. So then, or who knows? Maybe they are well, using no, AI no, no, on their no, side. No, they are. I, I, I can tell you as somebody who sells- we sell a lot of machine learning hardware into this market. The biggest buyers are the US government mm. and these ultra high frequency trading organizations. Freeberg, any final thoughts here? I'll give you the final word. Uh, how could this affect astronomy? How could this affect, you know, our search of the galaxies, you know, going out past Pluto, Saturn, breaching Uranus, any, any of those things, how could it impact? Any of those? I'm trying to get a Uranus junk to land. Help me out there, Tremont. <laughs> you got no, it's not the. I think you need to have more uh, space related. Um, yeah, workshop this one with me. Or gut, or gut biome related. You know, uh, you, gut you, biome. Yeah. So how would this affect super gut? Use trick, the promo code to, Twist. You have to trick Friedberg into thinking we're asking a serious question. Get yes. him down the science path and got then it. rug pull him. Now oh, that's, that's the right a good use of proper rug pull. Rug pull. Exactly. That's okay, let's do it. Here we go. Let's workshop. That's the rug pull. So uh, tell us, you know, when you're doing like super gut, use promo code Twist to get twenty five percent off. When you're doing super gut, <laughs> you're analyzing people's guts. How would you then have uh, machine learning in this? you know, API, uh, this chat API and, and GPT-3, how could that help 
with processing all of that, especially when it passes through Uranus. Freeberg. You okay with there, Freeberg? You are hungover. 